Thank you, everyone, for joining us today um, for what is definitely the most exciting and buzzworthy mobile event of the day, um, Apple Live, um, not so much. Um, we are actually I'm very excited about today's session. Um, we have a, a panel of some of the people who aren't just talking about the ifs of mobile recruiting, but the hows and what works um, from very different perspectives. So I would like to introduce our panelists um, in order. I'm gonna have them talk a, a little bit about themselves, uh, elevator pitch, who it is, what they're doing, and just uh, kind of uh, what their orientation to mobile is. So with that, I'd like to start off with, with Matt Brown, who's the co-founder and head of product for Work4. Welcome. Hi, thanks, Matt. Um, you know, as, as Matt mentioned, uh, second second Matt here, Matt too on the uh, on the call. Um, I'm the uh, co-founder and head of product here at Work4. I've been with the company for about four years now, um, helping us, uh, you know, working with our product development teams and tech teams, and working closely with Facebook to build recruiting solutions for Facebook. Um, but over the last three years, as we've been looking at our data mobile has increased um, overall from around two to five percent of our overall traffic to about 60 percent of traffic today so um, you know we've we've really gone from being a socially focused company to really a, a mobile and social company um, and a big part of that um, is is um, making job content accessible um, however candidates uh, are interested in accessing it so um, excited to talk to you guys today and um, yeah thank you Great. Uh, welcome, Matt. And uh, second, uh, Lars Schmidt, who is the founder of Amplify Talent and one of the earliest practitioners uh, to actually build and lead a uh, mobile recruiting program in-house. So welcome, Lars. Hey, thanks for having me, Matt. Um, again, as Matt mentioned, I'm the founder of Amplify Talent. Uh, we are an employer branding and recruiting optimization consultancy based uh, just outside of D.C. Um, my background, I kind of come at this from a recruiting practitioner's point of view. So I've been leading global recruiting teams most of my career, um, most recently running recruiting innovation for NPR in D.C. And um, prior to that, running global recruiting for a variety of startups as well as uh, Ticketmaster and Magento. So. Um, I'm a big mobile fan. I was uh, attempting to be glued to the uh, Apple Live streaming video, which was kind of a disaster uh, prior to this. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to talk mobile. <laughs> and last but absolutely certainly not least, um, one of the top analysts um, in the talent acquisition space, um, Kyle Lagunas from the Brandon Hall Group. Welcome, Kyle. Thanks, Matt, and welcome, everyone. Uh, as Matt mentioned, I'm talent acquisition analyst. I work at a company called Brandon Hall Group. We are the leading research and advisory firm specializing in human capital management. And uh, in my role here, I study trends in uh, emerging best practices in the space, ranging everywhere from recruitment marketing and employer branding on up to the uh, exciting world of hiring and onboarding. Excited to be here today. Thank you all for joining us. Um, again, a lot of different perspectives from the uh, industry expert side and, and Kyle, um, the uh, daily interaction with enterprise level customers on the product side with Matt, and then obviously Lars who, um, who helps companies uh, build this uh, on an in-house basis. So very excited uh, to kind of kick off uh, what's going to be an informal discussion here. I would like to encourage everyone because uh, little known fact, Twitter, the reason why there's a 140 character limit is due to the fact that it was started as a mobile platform. So that's the SMS character limit. But if you have any questions, would like to live tweet uh, any stats or any cool things that come up, uh, we are using the hashtag work for webinar. Uh, just append that on a tweet and we can make our reach and impressions look really impressive. Um, so with that, uh, again, I'd like to just kind of lay out what it is that we hope that you will get out today. So. Very high level, we're going to discuss uh, the strategy component of building a mobile recruiting program. And that's really how to take uh, what you already have in terms of system processes, uh, technology tools, uh, and then um, you know, optimize those for mobile, as well as some of the uh, market landscape on point solutions in various ways uh, that, that you can add capability with the mobile recruiting space. Um, next, we're going to talk about social media and mobile engagement. Um, obviously, we, we talk a lot about things like candidate experience, uh, employer brand, 
um, and that sort of thing. So we're really going to focus on the best ways to approach those from a mobile perspective, because obviously that's a little bit differentiated um, than uh, a lot of different experiences. And finally, um, to help you build a business case for, for mobile recruiting success, we're going to look at some of the best ways uh, that companies today are showing results uh, by looking at some of the benchmarks that matter most and how to measure the efficacy of your mobile recruiting program. Um, so with that, I'm actually going to turn it over to Matt. Um, obviously, we've all heard a lot of case use statistics on mobile, but um, as applied to recruiting, uh, definitely, this is some great data that, that Workforce put together in a white paper. Definitely encourage everyone to download that at, at workforlabs.com. Um, but, but Matt, by all means, take it away um, and, and, you know, I guess talk through why uh, this is something people need to be paying attention to. Did I lose you? Matt? Well... If he has dropped off the line, I can certainly walk through these statistics. Um, so basically where we're at right now, uh, obviously everyone's using mobile. 63% of job seekers uh, looked for a job. 48% have applied on a mobile device, which is just actually really interesting considering the fact that recent polls and data suggest that only about 10% of enterprise employers have a mobile optimized recruiting process. Matt, are you back on? No, he's not. So 40% um, of mobile users, again, said that they would apply to a direct competitor if they couldn't apply through mobile. Um, and uh, obviously, Matt talked a little bit about the case uses at the beginning. Um, again, this is not a question of if but how. Uh, what you're going to look at here is um, the fact that there are mobile, more mobile devices than people on Earth. We obviously have an expectation for a complete mobile experience on our website. And right now, mobile is actually generating more traffic than desktop. If you're spending money and allocating resources, to online recruiting, career sites, social media, and that sort of thing, and you don't have the capabilities to incorporate mobile, you're losing out fully on, uh, on, on over 60% uh, to the earlier point of candidates on the market, and that is a significant number um, when we look at passive uh, talent acquisition. So again, 16% of global employers had a mobile optimized career site, one in five of the Fortune 500, 63% of employees would drop off. Uh, you know, in that process. So I, I think that um, this slide right here makes as compelling a business case uh, as you possibly could for, for the impact of mobile recruiting. And, and so with that, again, uh, I definitely wanted to, to jump in. I think those statistics speak for themselves. And, and, and let's just start really basic. And, and I'd like to ask uh, Lars, um, certainly, uh, Lars, when you hear mobile recruiting as a corporate talent acquisition specialist, your, your CHR comes in and says, we need to start going mobile. Uh, what does that mean? What, what, what's in scope when we, when we talk mobile recruiting? Yeah, I mean, for me, I think you can, you can define it in a few different ways. I've always defined mobile recruiting is the ability to allow prospects and candidates to view your jobs on mobile devices and ideally apply as well. So it's essentially providing an end-to-end -end mobile application process for your new hires. Um, you know, and that's something that I think the end-to-end -end piece is something that not everybody gets. Some, some companies have a, you know, optimized career site or maybe they've got a, a mobile page uh, where they can send candidates, but maybe their ATS isn't optimized for mobile. So, you know, you, you provide that initial entry point in a mobile friendly way and then when they actually click a job, they're pinching and scrolling. You know, or maybe you present the jobs in a mobile optimized way, but now there's no way to apply through a mobile device. So to me, you know, true kind of full cycle mobile recruiting is the ability to both serve up your career site, serve up your jobs, and allow people to apply online through their mobile device. Um, now, I'll turn this over to Kyle. So, Kyle, when you look at the mobile recruiting marketplace as an analyst, um, what are some of the major trends or themes you see from a technology side? To, to, to Lars's point, you have responsive career sites, you have, um, you know, integrations with various social networks, which will fill out data, um, and then you have some applicant tracking systems, which obviously won't even appear in a mobile browser. Um, so, so with that in mind, kind of technology-wise, what are you seeing on the marketplace in terms of trends, and, and, and what seems to be working the best 
um, if you're looking to implement um, mobile uh, into a current recruiting strategy? You know, it's a, an interesting question. Um, I think that there are the vast majority of solution providers in the talent acquisition space are toying with this, the idea of mobile, trying to wrap their heads around it uh, at the same time as their corporate clients are as well. Um, from where I'm sitting, I'm seeing the, the needle moving quite a bit in the last, I don't know, in the last year or two even. Um, whereas before, five years ago, people were more focused on making career sites um, and online applications more mobile friendly, kind of to, to Lars's point earlier. Um, but now I'm seeing people more focused on user experience and creating a, a mobile user experience that's uh, as sophisticated as you might find on a consumer site, uh, an Amazon or, or, or what have you. Um, and these sites, they're not just getting information to their visitors um, in an easy way, something that looks good, something that feels right, you know, that's easy to understand. Uh, but they're also gathering a lot of information on who's coming to their website. Um, how this manifests in mobile recruiting, um, I'm seeing solution providers who are gathering more information on candidate behavior, uh, candidate in job interests, excuse me, career interests, their, their geographic location, um, and then they're adapting that user experience accordingly. Um, and at the same time, I'm also seeing it's, it's not just, people aren't just making a, a, a mobile version of their career site anymore. They're really more focused on a responsive design, looking at the, just the, the basic way that the, um, the website or their, their um, career site data, I guess, is, is uh, showing up on a user's um, mobile device, whether it's a phone, smartphone or a tablet. Uh, whatever device they're coming to, they're getting the information they need. Uh, in a way that looks good. Um, I think this this is what's really driving this is candidate behavior is is um, I'm sorry candidate expectations are evolving rapidly, right? This is because in the consumer world where they spend most of their time, uh, most of the places they're going, uh, most of the websites they're trying to access, they either have a, a very good looking uh, and high performing uh, application mobile app or their website is already fully optimized um, to take advantage of the traffic that's coming to them from a mobile device. Uh, and this is where a lot of organizations are kind of struggling to, to keep up, and, and um, I'll, I'll share some more on that later. Okay, great. And um, uh, Matt, are you, are you with us uh, on the line? Yep, can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Awesome. So, um, you know, just kind of, uh, you're, you're somebody who talks to, to clients uh, and, and enterprise recruiters about mobile every day. What are some of the big pain points you're hearing? And I guess um, in terms of, of it being a relatively obvious business case, talk to me a little bit about what the most common highlights that you hit are on why uh, you should adopt a mobile recruiting strategy um, um, with them. So in other words, what are you hearing uh, from your clients, customers, and um, essentially where's the market at in your opinion on adoption? And has that changed at all over the past two years? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, it really it really goes back to a few of the points um, touched on earlier, which is candidates are using their phones on a sort of consumer basis, um, on a day to day basis. They're interacting with e-commerce websites and 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 social networks uh, in a kind of very seamless, user friendly um, mobile way, and they expect that same sort of thing in their job seeking experience. Um, there's a phrase in in political science: people will will vote with their feet. If they, you know, they don't like something in a given city or whatnot, they'll end up moving. I think we're seeing the same thing with candidates when it comes to, to mobile job seeking. If they, if they don't like an experience or if they're not getting a job seeking experience that, that's at the level um, that, they, that they get with Facebook or Amazon or any of the other services they use on a day-to-day -day basis, they're just going to leave. They're not going to apply. Um, and so it's, it's this the question of... Do you how much how much do you expect candidates to do on a mobile? Is it do you focus on that mobile viewing experience um, and and the, the the job itself the job views, or do you focus on the apply experience as well? And depending on the state that a given company's ATS is in, um, it can be quite expensive or uh, a costly long process to get that mobile apply um, uh, mobile that that apply mobile friendly. So what we're seeing is companies thinking about that trade off between that capturing some candidate data um, through uh, job views on mobile, and then as a step two, going into the apply process. So it's, you know, they know mobile is an important part. Um, they know they're going to lose a lot of candidates if they don't have um, a mobile-friendly 
process, but they're, that we're seeing them starting to think about it and break it down into these two steps. Sure. Um, yeah, and Matt, if I, Matt, if you don't mind, I'd like to just jump in there um, and, and offer some commentary as well. I, I, I really do see mobile recruiting as, as being much more than, than just a mobile version of your career site or a mobile apply process. It's really about adopting your talent acquisition process in general so that it can leverage mobile technologies so that you can attract and engage candidates from wherever they are. And so that the scope of mobile recruiting is much broader than a lot of organizations quite understand now. And, uh, and, and a lot of that comes from, uh, that's just where the solution provider started in delivering some sort of um, opportunities to optimize. Uh, but now I'm seeing that our understanding of mobile being becoming a little bit more sophisticated and that's manifesting in, uh, in the product side as well. Sure, and that, I guess, tees up a great question for Lars. Lars, I'll let you, you geek out a little bit on this. Looking down a little bit on the curve, uh, we talk about mobile recruiting, to Kyle's point, very much like app or responsive design, mobile optimized career site. Do you see um, any application for, thing, obviously not QR codes, uh, I think that experiment failed, but things like augmented reality, um, virtual reality with, with an Oculus or, or even, um, you know, wearable technology. Do you see that falling into mobile recruiting fold uh, strategies develop or is that a separate category, you think? Yeah, you know, I think it's a separate category. Um, I also think we're nowhere near really having that in practice right now. Um, you know, it, in my view, I think one of the problems we have in recruiting is we're always so focused on, you know, looking years ahead at what's next when we haven't really optimize what's now, right? Like we, we've got, you know, mobile, social, branding. These are all things that, you know, recruiting teams really have to have embedded and woven into their talent practices today. And many still aren't there. And so I think the idea of, of augmented reality and, you know, certainly wearables are going to be, um, you know, becoming a, a big part, I think, of, of the consumer, um, you know, adoption. Like people are going to start using, obviously, iWatch got announced today. Uh, you know, Google Glass is, is there. I don't know what ultimately that's going to look like. But, you know, in the next couple of years, wearables are going to have a much bigger foothold in the population. And recruiting has to adjust to that. But I think, you know, in terms of things like augmented reality and, and, and certain things like that, to me, that that's still a few years away from potentially really being mainstream in terms of recruiting practice. I think we, we still have to you know, get most of our organizations up to speed with where things are today. And I mean, you, you touched on the stat earlier, Matt, around, you know, only 10% of the Fortune 500 career sites are optimized for mobile. I mean, that's insane, you know, and, and the reality is, I think one of the things that is driving a lot of this change is, you know, by next year, almost half of the workforce will be Gen Y. And this is a generation that is, is grown up with social and mobile devices, and, and they're accustomed to be able to to purchase things and do all kinds of things on their mobile device. And I think that, you know, while our recruiting practices have to apply to all generations, that's obviously going to be the biggest part of our labor force. And, you know, that can be a huge competitive advantage or a hindrance if you're not taking that into consideration in your recruiting kind of structure and your programs. We'll move on. Let's talk a little bit about building a, a recruiting, a mobile recruiting strategy. And I'd, I'd like to start um, with Kyle. Kyle, when uh, if I'm an employer who knows I need to get on mobile, but I'm still kind of in the process of putting together what that might look like into a formalized strategy, um, what are some of the things that you would advise I need to think about before taking action? So in other words, if I had a, a checklist, uh, what are some of the top things that I should keep in mind uh, to your earlier point of needing to optimize existing processes and technologies? Yeah, you know, uh, I, the most generic advice I can offer, of course, uh, is to be strategic. Um, mobile, for the sake of mobile, is a waste of time and it's a waste of money. Um, if you are just creating a mobile career site, you don't even understand what kind of mobile traffic you're having. You don't understand who's discovering your career site and how. Um, you're really just shooting in the dark. Um, but if you take the time to uh, understand what your needs are and what the opportunities are for you, and then you can start to build some KPIs and get into the boring side of measurement by establishing metrics so you can actually gauge impact, then you can actually manage your mobile recruiting strategy accordingly. 
Um, and I use the word strategy lightly because I don't see that that manifesting very frequently in the, uh, at, le at least in the enterprise space. Um, I mean, right now, about 5% of companies have a formal mobile strategy with clear goals. Um, uh, and nearly 60%, at, at least in, in, uh, in our re research, 60% uh, are, still aren't even using mobile at all. That doesn't mean they're not they, their recruiters aren't logging into the LinkedIn app and, and running searches on there or, or, or what have you. They they're not using mobile in a formal sense. Uh, and so, before you just completely take the plunge, I think it's really important to get a baseline, understand exactly where you're at and what your opportunities are, uh, and then plan uh, plan accordingly. Great, um, Matt. Um, the question for you. Obviously, you're talking to a lot of, of companies, again, with a lot of various uh, hiring needs and differentiated uh, overarching recruiting strategies. Uh, what are some of the uh, tangible goals or outcomes that you're seeing come up most when it, when it comes to leveraging mobile recruiting? Like, like where are, um, you know, the, the strategies headed? What, what, what seems to be the most recurring ultimate goals? Yeah. So what, what we're seeing, I, I think a lot of companies are taking a, a very, um, you know, as, as, as Kyle mentioned, a, almost a strategic, a very pragmatic view to, to how they see their mobile roadmap. And they're recognizing that, you know, a lot of times they are falling into that overwhelming majority of companies who, you know, don't have anything on mobile. They really are starting from scratch. Um, and so they're seeing this as a, as a multi-step process because they realize that every single day, um, that they don't have something up there for mobile, they're just they're losing 100% of those candidates that are on a phone trying to access their job content or the branding content or or whatever it is. So um, what we're seeing them them doing or some of the you know some of the strategies that are coming about are again breaking that into smaller points. Let's let's have our branding content. Let's have our videos be mobile friendly. Let's have our just the job descriptions themselves be mobile friendly. Let's make sure that our email alerts themselves are mobile friendly. So going through that going through the list of every single place that a candidate could interact with their content, and that's working with your own systems as well as talking to your, your vendors um, and understanding you know, where, um, you know, what's mobile friendly, what's not mobile friendly, um, what's a higher priority to get mobile friendly, and then working on those internal systems or working with vendors to make sure that um, you, know, you prioritize strategically um, what you make mobile friendly first. Right. And, and, and Lars, obviously, you had mentioned uh, in, uh, employer branding earlier. Um, obviously, if I'm like you know applying to an ostensible tech company and they don't have any way that I can access the site in mobile, I would suggest that might not look good for their employer brand. Um, but just from your, I guess, uh, work uh, both hands-on and now uh, consulting, um, I guess what do you see as being some of the uh, major myths and, and, and misconceptions surrounding mobile recruiting. I guess how does um, being a late adopter uh, affect uh, uh, the employer brand? So just I guess talk a little bit about the the two uh, the correlation between the two that you're seeing. Yeah, I mean I think that for me, you know, br employer brand uh, oftentimes in mobile are linked pretty closely. Uh, and I'll give you a scenario in practice. I mean. If you're developing a compelling employer brand, you know what you're doing is you're, you've got a multi-channel approach, but the way that you're using social is you're providing valuable and interesting content to your audience, the various channels you know that you have, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Facebook, whatever you're using. You know your your aim is to build an engaged audience by providing value to them, providing interesting content. That might be about your company, it might be about the industry, it might be about trends. Um, it'll also be jobs, but that won't be, you know, the primary driver. The, the, the primary driver is providing value and interesting stuff. You know, a lot of people are going to be consuming that content on a mobile device. You know, they're, they're going to be, you know, maybe they're in a, a lunch meeting or they're somewhere else, they're in the bathroom, who knows, you know, but they're, they're, they're reading, you know, they're reading their Twitter timeline, they're seeing your content, they're getting engaged by it, they're sharing it. Now you've got, you're, you know, you're developing habits in your audience through your branding efforts that they go they see you as a go-to source for valuable information that means that they're now sharing some of your tweets because they find it valuable that makes it more likely when you are tweeting jobs because you're not spamming them with jobs and just beating them over the heads with them um, they're going to share those and so other people may get that job and, and workforce actually gave us some interesting stats on this when I was at NPR but essentially you know you'll have people that are now getting your jobs as well via tweets or via Facebook, via mobile devices. 
And you know, the idea is, you know, you've got this audience that's engaged through your branding efforts. You know, but now that when you're getting jobs in front of them, if they click to it and it's not taking them to something that's mobile optimized, chances are they're not going to stick around. And you know, we talk a lot. I think we get you know obsessed by the idea of kind of active and passive candidates in recruiting too much so in my eyes. But you know, the, those those passive candidates, those people that aren't actively looking for a job, you have a limited window to get their attention. And that disconnect between providing engaging content that's getting them interested and then not giving them a mobile experience where they can actually go through and follow through on that job if they are interested uh, is likely going to cause them to bounce. So you know, that to me, I think that those, the two things, branding and mobile, are very much linked for that reason. Great. Um, and I'm going to leave this question actually open to all three of you. Um, if I were to look at a, a company or set of companies who have really just nailed mobile recruiting from an early adoption perspective, Certainly, um, you know, Pepsi comes to mind. Uh, Chris White's been playing in that space for quite some time. Um, but, but, but I guess any companies that come to mind who uh, we could point people to as being an example of best practice in action and, and kind of why uh, you think that? Anyone? It, you know, I, I could you just repeat the question for me, Matt? I kind of lost you as you're yeah, going. Yeah, no. So, so what companies are getting it right? Uh, okay. If you have any examples of companies, you're like this company has mobile recruiting down cold um, from from a just uh, best practices perspective. If any, this is obviously evolving. So who, who, who's who's best in breed? Do you think? If anyone. Well, I can speak to that generally. We haven't done any case studies on mobile uh, yet, but it's on, <laughs> Matt, your favorite line, it's on the agenda, it's on the roadmap. Um, but I will say that there are some common traits among the early adopters who are doing this right. Uh, they're just making it easy. You know, they're, they're starting with just accessibility. Uh, to Lars's point earlier, if somebody's engaging with you and with your brand, uh, with the, the content you're sending out, and then once you share some career-related information, they click through and it's not mobile optimized, they're going to drop off. Um, so I, I think that the, the companies who are doing best, they're starting with some small wins. They're focused on making it, um, uh, making their career information as accessible as possible without flooding people's uh, news feeds, without flooding people's Twitter streams. Uh, they're, they're focused on accessibility so that when, pe when people come to learn more about their employer brand, uh, to learn more about their, their career opportunities, they can find it. You know, they don't have to say, they don't have to put their phone away and say, I'll check when I get home because by the time they leave the office and get home, they've already forgotten about it. They have 17 other things that they're more interested in. So they're more focused on, on accessibility and, and, and leveraging that interest they built through, through branding. Right. And then final question on this one, um, and Matt, um, I, I'm curious uh, for your take on this. Um, is there uh, vi differentiated strategies that work for mobile recruiting for specific levels or industries, uh, or is the approach generally universal in terms of adoption across an uh, enterprise level employer? So it, I, I, I'd focus, again, to just to come back to the uh, and I know that there's, there's certainly the branding component, which we haven't seen too much differentiation between, um, between industry type or job type or company size. Um, candidates, you know, whether they're on a phone or a desktop, generally do want to learn about your company. They want to understand what it's like to, to work there. They want to understand the culture. So that certainly has to be um, mobile, uh, you know, mobile friendly, accessible on a desktop, tablet, or phone. Um, the one point of differentiation, I'd say, um, that we've seen um, meaningfully impact um, our products and the advice that we give to candidates is um, when it comes to the apply process. Um, there are a lot of companies who are, you know, really pushing for that that full mobile apply process, and it, it, I would say that is relevant depending on how complex your your apply process is. If you have a ten step process that has um, you know, you have to upload three different types of documents, and there are all these conditional fields, and you know, it takes 25 minutes. People aren't gen people, candidates generally aren't going to go through that process on a phone. Um, whereas, if you have a simpler apply process, um, you know, that is something that they generally will apply for on their phone, especially if you can, you know, say, upload a resume from Dropbox or upload a resume from LinkedIn. So, um, what we've seen is we've seen splitting. We've seen a splitting in. Um, a splitting in, uh, in company types based on how complex 
um, their, mo their mobile apply processes versus their desktop apply process and counseling them generally to um, keep that to keep that full apply process um, you know, off of mobile um, or at least just just focus on the first part of that registration rather than the the full apply process on mobile yeah and if I can chime in on that too that people don't want it to spend time filling out a long and extensive uh, application on any device uh, and so I think that the importance here isn't just simplifying applications for a mobile user because you have to be very careful with um, with how your application process is presented to somebody who comes from a, a computer at the library or who's using their brand new smartphone. You have to make sure that both of those candidates are asked the same questions, have an opportunity to provide the same information, so they can have the same fighting chance for the role. So if if you're looking at simplifying, if um, this is what the great opportunity mobile offers, is it gives you an opportunity to look at your entire process and see where is the waste, where is the redundancy, where is the excessive ask, and then fixing that. And so um, when it, I think it is great to have um, mobile users get mo kind of do more of a, an engage, a, just a general engagement, you know, so they can get into your ATS, they can get into your CRM, maybe without filling out a full application. But if you are going to have a, a mobile application, it has to have that, the same opportunities, ask for the same information as you're, you're asking for in, in a regular application. Before Great. we go any further, we have some good questions from our listeners. Is this a good time, Matt? Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Great time. Okay. Corey is wondering if we, uh, or the panel, could talk a little bit more specific about specific success stories and less theory. So if they have good hands-on samples to share. And then we also uh, have a question whether generation matters. Uh, whether the different generations in the workforce and who are applying uh, have different mobile habits. Question. Uh, Lars, can you share some of your hands-on experience uh, that worked well uh, with you? And then maybe we can take the generational question afterwards. Maybe um, Matt from our workforce could address that. Sure. Sure, I think one, uh, and this probably isn't actually giving uh, an exact answer because it's, it's kind of hybrid mobile social than just mobile. Um, but one of the stats that, uh, that I found interesting in NPR, and I think it was primarily because of the branding strategy that we had, is Twitter was actually our number four source of hire. Um, and we found that we had a heavy engagement via Twitter um, of our jobs that we actually were sharing. So. Um, you know, part of that is we didn't, you know, I, I don't have specific metrics as to what percentage of that was desktop versus mobile, um, other than talking to individ individuals uh, who we came in who caught, you know, tweets on mobile devices. Uh, as I'm hearing myself give that answer, it's probably not actually the right kind of metric you're looking for, but that's, in terms of a specific metric around results of mobile, uh, that's probably the closest thing that comes to mind, but I'll hand it over actually to the analysts that might have uh, a little more specifics they want to share. Yeah, I mean, I can weigh in there too. I think that uh, people in in the enterprise, practitioners at the front line, they they want these specific examples because they want to have concrete evidence that mobile has a lasting impact. Um, and unfortunately, what I'm seeing is even those those uh, self-identified high-performing organizations who are embracing mobile. Um, all they have to share are anecdotes, you know, because um, few organizations have developed a sophisticated measurement model for for mobile um, and for social in general. But I, I think that if you want to look at some some sort of success stories, I would I would focus more on um, on employer brand success because they are tied so closely. As Lars mentioned earlier, um, any sort of employer brand that isn't mobile optimized is has a huge gap. Uh, that there's a, a major a major point of weakness that I think people need to address. Um, for right now, I, th I think it's more it's we're, we're more in a, a very much development stage where mobile recruiting is in its infancy, and so mostly what we can talk about right now is is theory until some more organizations are able to step up and, and implement some sort of measurement model where they can they can illustrate hard data on ROI. 
Yeah, that's, that's a great point. This is Matt from Work Here, Work For Here. One, along those lines, one thing that we are seeing is that um, you know you have to have the the mobile strategy in place. Um, obviously, then in taking the strategic view to it, but the difficult thing is this parallel track of making sure all your your tracking and analytics is is in place. And when we work with clients, a lot of times what we will do um, is go through and help you know clean up their source tracking and and do a lot of that um, you know source mapping for them. Um, and a good example of that, and to, just to get into some, some data and, and a, a little case study here, um, we're working with a client who took this sort of step-by-step step approach to mobile where um, they, they were working with us to recruit on Facebook. We were driving a ton of traffic to them. I think we were, I'm just looking at this, this uh, unpublished case study that we have here. It should be coming out soon. Um, it looks like we were the, the, their fifth largest source um, of applicants coming from Facebook. And obviously a very large portion of that um, was... Um, were coming on mobile. So, but there was a complete drop off because they didn't have a mobile solution. They'd be able to view the jobs and, and that was it. So we built, uh, we had a mobile landing page where the candidates could go ahead and, and enter their email address and then receive the job by email um, and, and check it out and apply later, um, bumped up the conversion rate. And we always see a very high conversion rate on these sort of email alerts or email me the job later because the, you know, the candidates are, are active candidates or, or whatnot, they're sharing them with friends. But then we took it one step further and implemented a simple mobile apply process there. And they actually ended up having, um, surprising enough, a, a conversion rate on the mobile uh, uh, site that was as high as the conversion rate on their desktop site. And we're making optimizations to it over time that's actually increasing that, that conversion rate. So a good example of something that was mentioned before where you're using mobile to rethink your, your, your existing processes. You're not just taking your existing apply process and slapping a mobile interface on it, but you're actually rethinking what can be done and what should be done um, given this, this new opportunity that you have in mobile. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and Matt, while you're talking, I'm, I'm thinking about some of these other points of research I'm doing um, in, in tracking sources and tr in sort of tracking um, all of your, your website data. Um, and Google Analytics is a great tool that people are using uh, to understand who's coming to their site, what they're doing once they get there, maybe where they're falling off. Um, and for those of you who want a specific example of a use case here, um, my friend's at Groupon, Dustin Carper. I was just had a uh, conversation with him a couple of weeks ago. I'm, I'm working on a piece of research to actually gauge the impact of employer brand. And so we're talking about you know, how in investments in employer brand and solutions like Glassdoor are actually driving real performance in talent acquisition. He talks to me about his, his analysis of their source data. He is looking at who is coming to their website, he's looking at where they're going, and uh, looking at specifically at job postings. And there was one job posting they had where people were coming, they were looking at it, and they were falling off. And he was able to look at this through an analytics tool. Um, and he made a point and built this into his process where he's constantly looking at these behaviors to understand what people are doing. He's seeing this, this glaring drop off point, so they, they take a look at the job posting, beef it up a bit, give it some more love, and then sure enough, they get more traffic, they get more applications, and then finally they were able to find candidates that fit the role. Um, they were able to do that because they're tracking that, because they know that that's important to their organization. And while I, I I know that there are a number of companies who have hundreds of open recs at any given time. It's very difficult for you to track that manually. Um, that's why it's important to embrace some of these new tools that are emerging. And, and there, it's, it's not just Google Analytics. Almost any solution provider, uh, well, not almost any solution provider, but a lot of solution providers in this space are starting to develop more advanced analytics and reporting tools that will track those behaviors and track that performance automatically for you so that then all you have to do is take a look uh, at your, your dashboard and see alerts on, on where there might be gaps in performance. So it's, it's, it's a very high level conversation right now because the, while the adoption of mobile technology is slow, the adoption of those analytics and reporting tools is even slower. And so it's, uh, that's one thing that I have on my agenda for this next year is to help organizations understand the value of those so we can start to close that gap. I think it's a, it's a really important uh, need for, for recruiters in the space to understand impact, uh, but also understand the role of measurement in driving that. And, and, just, and just a larger point there, kind of same, you know, same pattern that we're seeing with mobile where 
um, you know, in the past, especially thinking through uh, recruiting systems that were implemented, it was it was kind of a, you know, you had to take the whole enchilada. You had to implement the entire system at one time, and it was this big event that took quite a while, um, and it was it was binary, either it was implemented or it was not. What we're what we're seeing and what we're advising a lot of companies to do with mobile and and then with with this tracking and, and analytics as well is just start somewhere. You don't have to have you know your analytics process isn't um, you know it's never going to be complete. It's always going to be evolving. The same thing goes for mobile. So just start somewhere. As long as you're tracking the overall say drop off rate across the board, and then maybe step two can be splitting that between desktop and mobile, and then step three can be more in depth um, analysis by by job type or whatnot. But and some kind of data, some kind of tracking is better than no tracking at all. So what we've seen, and, and again, what we're counseling clients to do is, um, you know, to not take this binary, you know, we have analytics, we don't have analytics view, but again, just to, just to start somewhere and start tracking some metrics and, and, you know, every week or every month try to try to add another set. So um, pri again, take that strategic view, as was mentioned, and, and prioritize what you, what you need to do. And don't wait until, say, 2015 to start tracking some of this stuff. Yeah. And, and, and to give, I guess, a little bit of um, what I would consider uh, best practices, companies in action, um, a lot of companies from an analytics standpoint, obviously, it's much easier to collect data through like uh, a, regi or a, a Facebook Connect or, or LinkedIn API or any sort of third party site and get candidate data than it is to actually have them formally uh, enter um, the talent acquisition process through going through a full application. So what I see a lot of companies doing who have uh, a pretty long track record of building mobile is actually using mobile to build up a database that's segmented. Uh, you know, it's often called a talent community or network. And from there, build up, uh, you know, use that to adjudicate both its a success and then also use that to send targeted job works through emails, SMS, and other sources. And some companies um, I definitely would consider checking out uh, you know, their mobile recruiting programs. I believe that they all have either Android or iOS apps, but, but I think the ones who definitely do a great job of this worth checking out are PepsiCo. Um, they have the us possibilities. Um, GM, General Motors, uh, does a really great job. Sodexo, Ari Balls Group, does an, uh, an outstanding job of doing high volume, um, you know, high turnover sort of roles. Uh, and then the other one that I would definitely point to as being an example of a, a kind of staffing best practice is a deco only because what they do is they're able to create a completely localized experience um, and then from there turn it into an even more targeted experience, not only based on location uh, of where your phone is being registered, but also um, by segments once you fill in information. So they're really approaching it as more of a marketing and automation tool. So those are just some ones that might be worth checking out as well. So um, I guess, you know, in the interest of time, this has been a great conversation. Um, I, I do want to just ask, and Matt, we'll, we'll start with you, um, 140 characters or less, um, what can an individual recruiter do right now to move the needle on mobile? So once this webinar is over, they're back at their desk, what, what power do they have? What can they do? immediately to, to start seeing a little bump on, on mobile recruiting. Um, so I, you know, and this is, this is kind of a, a plug for, for work for in a way, but you know, we're, we're building the company at the, at the intersection between social and mobile because those two things are, are obviously very much connected. So, I mean, again, in the, in the theme of 140 characters, say one way to get started as an, as an individual recruiter is just get more involved in, in Twitter. I think you'll, you'll learn a lot. Um, you know, not just about um, uh, obviously the, the industry and, and being able to engage with the people, but you'll be able to to see things really from a from a candidate's perspective. So start posting jobs to your own organization. Um, follow other companies that are posting jobs, and you know, don't just follow don't just follow the best ones. Follow um, your competitors. Follow um, people that you know companies that you think can improve their process, and just. Be a, you know, the same way as uh, you can be an educated consumer by just researching what's out there um, as an individual, be an educated um, candidate and just see what it's like um, to go through that process. One thing that um, we often also counsel our, our, our clients to do, which surprisingly they, they, they don't do that often, is go through your own apply process. Think, put yourself in the mindset of a candidate to your own company and see what it's like to find a job on Twitter and then see that on your phone and then click on that link and then go ahead and see where that, that takes you. So um, 
Twitter is a great way to kind of jump into that stream and maybe not make changes immediately as, a, as an individual um, recruiter, but you'll at least start to see where are the pain points and what are the sort of discovery modes that actual candidates um, have when they're, when they're looking to engage with your organization. Lars, when you... I don't know what that was. Lars, when you were starting to build um, mobile recruiting programs uh, at, at your former employers, what was the first thing you did when you rolled out? Like, what, what was the immediate action item uh, that was a good starting off point for you? Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, I think, because again, you know, we've talked a lot about social and mobile being integrated. Um, I looked across the social platforms and tried to figure out which platform would be most effective for the types of roles that we recruited for. Um, and so since a lot of our positions were either in journalism or technology, um, I found that both of those populations were really active on Twitter. And, uh, and we had a very active uh, employee base on Twitter as well. So that kind of steered me towards Twitter as being the right kind of starting point for our mobile off efforts. I think we were probably, you know, four months deep into Twitter before we launched our Facebook um, recruiting page. and. Uh, you know, that helped, I think, for me because I was able to start, you know, Twitter, I think, is a, a really good platform for building community and kind of getting used to that open dialogue with prospects and with candidates and interacting with people. And I think even more so on Facebook in that sense because it's such an open platform. So for me, um, that, that kind of steered us towards Twitter. But I think the point uh, that uh, Matt made earlier about, you know, two things I want to underscore. One, just educate yourself. You know, understand what the application process is within your own organization. Many recruiters don't even do that. Apply to one of your jobs. You know, get, get a sense of what that experience is going to be like for a prospect. Um, are, you, are you beating them to death with unnecessary fields? You know, are you creating too much friction in the application process that's going to cause them to bounce? You know, understand what that is. Um, and then the second piece is just educating yourself on how other organizations are using social and mobile. There's tons of information out there. Lots of, uh, you know, kind of our peers in the recruiting space are sharing what they're doing and what they're working on and what the results are. So that information is available. You know, you just take some time to kind of research it and find it and follow it and, uh, you know, let, let the experiences that others have had help kind of guide and shape, you know, what, what you might bring to your own organization. I butchered 140 characters, but that's that's my uh, that's no, my. All right, you did the, the tweet longer, which which I appreciate. Um, so, <laughs> Kyle, um, from your perspective, um, what are some of the I guess things that you would recommend I could do right now as a recruiter to kick off mobile recruiting with no budget or resources or even buy-in? How can I move that? <clears throat> Uh, that's a good question. As a, in, and we're talking as an individual recruiter, or yes, as, a, okay. as an individual recruiter who might not have buy-in yet, but realizes this is important. Yeah, sure. You know, and this is actually, I think, where uh, the the greatest opportunity lies. If you look at social recruiting, that's where it started too. It's on the front line. Recruiters saw an opportunity to use social tools to further their reach, further the exposure of their open up their open job opportunities. And so, I think the same opportunity presents itself here. Um, I think that the starting point is establish a benchmark for your existing employer brand. See who is coming to you from where and how many, what opportunities there are that result from that. For example, if you have a lot of people coming to your website from a mobile device and they are, um, they are, uh, oh, hang on one second. I'm sorry, guys. Got somebody. Go ahead, Kyle. Should we take a question? Yeah, just yeah. So, and, and I'll just throw in one as well that has been mentioned. Um, if you're doing high volume staffing, or you're in a place like Silicon Valley where um, you have a lot of direct competitors in the area, uh, any uh, Foursquare I would say is a great thing because people check in at work. If you leave a tip that you're hiring at a direct competitor. Um, that's a really, really easy, low impact and free way to uh, raise awareness and directly target uh, in both employee populations and competitors, uh, as well as consumers. If uh, when Applebee's does that on, at, at every location, is they add a, hey, by the way, we're hiring. Check this out, and they link to the position. So Foursquare, any location-based uh, thing like that's a good thing to check out. So, 
Yeah, that's what I was, uh, I, this is Kyle back again. Um, that's what I was going to get at is I think a great opportunity is to look at how consumer organizations are in interacting with potential customers and then see how you can adapt that same model um, to your organization um, without a big spend that, you know, there's, there's different opportunities there. You can understand um, who is trying to interact with your brand and what challenge they might be having and then seeing how you as an individual contributor can address that. Um, I think that there are a number of opportunities, but if you can show your, the, the leader of your recruiting organization uh, that you're having hundreds or even thousands of, mo of mobile visitors, but they're, uh, they're dropping off, they're not applying because they're having trouble navigating your desktop version of your career site, then that's a pretty compelling case that you might need to upgrade, that you guys might need to get serious about mobile. If, on the other hand, you take a look at Google Analytics and you don't see much traffic coming from a mobile device, it might not be that important to you. It might not be that valuable now. So you can just start to think about mobile um, because the reality is, although mobile is a very important trend for a lot of enterprise organizations right now, uh, I would say for the majority of small companies, uh, it's, it's just not as relevant yet. I think there are more pressing concerns. Going back to Lars's um, point, if, there are still a lot of elements of the traditional talent acquisition process that need more attention now than um, whether or not your career site is mobile ready. And I think that understanding uh, what opportunities there are for your organization uh, is, is critical here to making any sort of, before you make any sort of investment. Great. Um, and so with that, um, you know, I just want to, uh, we're running on time. Um, mobile recruiting checklist workforce put this out. Um, think there are three really easy steps. Evaluate your current career site, build a mobile optimized one if you don't have one, and then integrate your ATS. Those are really the three things you need to be looking at. Um, and then some things just to consider are mobile responsive design, uh, fast loading time. So if it's any more than five seconds to load, uh, Google will penalize you uh, for that in organic SEO. Not too much scrolling, easy user experience, uh, short readable consumable text, uh, prominent search bar, in fact, they actually did a, a study recently that showed that 84% of candidates only wanted to search for jobs on mobile, not necessarily apply. That was their top functionality. Uh, and then don't use Flash because we were doubtless not going to get people uh, who still have a BlackBerry curve uh, accessing your website. So HTML5, uh, definitely the way to go, I would say. So. Um, with that, Anna, um, we have a few minutes. Any other questions that we got? We absolutely do. One of the uh, re reoccurring questions is, uh, could you once again, Matt, be so kind to mention the companies that you thought did a great job? Uh, yes, sure. So some companies that I would recommend checking out are, are GM, so General Motors, Adeco, Pepsi, uh, I obviously have to say Zappos because you can't have a recruiting conversation without them. Um, I also uh, think that some other companies that have done a very effective job at this uh, include um, uh, Applebee's, uh, does a great job with mobile recruiting, believe it or not, as does um, Amazon. So all, all companies who have very advanced recruiting efforts, and Starbucks, another, another great example of a very localized um, approach that, that incorporates mobile for direct apply. So. And then we have uh, our Twitter question or a source question. Uh, let me try to read this off and Lars, uh, I think this might be mostly um, something you want to tackle. It was, was Twitter the original source of these hires? Was Twitter defined as the source of hire because the leads were sourced on Twitter, or did the lead come through an engagement effort that focused on leveraging Twitter? Did I manage to do that right, Lars? Yep, yeah, I got you. It was based on self-identification. So we used iSIMS as our ATS. All of our source data came from um, self-identification. So these were all people who when they applied, uh, we have a drop-down menu of you know, dozens of options of where they may have come from. They self-selected Twitter as how they learned about the job. All right. Thank you. And then uh, we still have the outstanding question of mobile users and generations. Uh, are there any of you who could share uh, if there is any differentiations between the different generations in our current workforce? <laughs> this is Kyle. I'll, I'll jump on that. Um, Matt. 
Charney, you know that uh, you and I are pretty much on the same page where um, we're getting really tired of the, uh, the Gen Y conversation. Um, I think that if you want to understand um, generational behavior and, and how you can actually um, optimize your site for whatever your target audience is, I think it's important to look at buying behaviors, look at consumer behaviors, because um, can, at, at least at the beginning of, of the job search, um, mobile users uh, tend to break, their, their behavior tends to be similar to how they would shop for, um, for some sort of goods on, on Amazon. Um, I think that they are, there are some great case studies on buyer behaviors. Um, I'm not sure if, um, if many of those do look specifically at generations because there aren't, I, I aren't huge differences. Um, but I think if you want to understand uh, generational specific, think about how your older relatives interact on Facebook. You know, they're, they're not quite as savvy. Uh, they might overshare, you know, or they, they might have a, a bit of uh, um, some social media snafus that the, that the rest of uh, the early adopters from Gen Y or Gen X already got out of their system. And so it's important to, um, to be a little more elementary in your approach to mobile optimization if you do expect to attract some, um, some boomer audience or, or what have you. Um, but otherwise, I, I think a great place to start would be looking at somewhere like Amazon or, or even on, on, uh, on Google or, or something like something on, like that. And just picking up real quick on that, the one uh, talking about consumer trends, but an employer and recruitment trend, one thing uh, just to be aware of is actually mobile applies and mobile usage for jobs skews older than consumer usage. In fact, the average uh, job seeker would be in the, the Gen X uh, cohort uh, with that. And the reason why is because companies tend to monitor employee activity and or firewall certain job boards or job sites. So as a result, your more experienced hires are actually doing their primary job searching at work, we're seeing from behavior, and they're doing that on their mobile device that's off network through their data plan. So it actually, from an employment uh, perspective, skews just a little bit older than the consumer side. We do have a few more questions, but before we get to them, I just want to share with everybody who's listening in that if we do not get to your question, we are going to answer you offline. We encourage our panelists to answer any unanswered questions after the webinar is done. So um, don't uh, fret, we'll get to you. Uh, but here is another um, uh, question. Bill is wondering, are there any companies that offer complete mobile ap uh, application? And if so, who are they? Apple. Apple is the only example I can think of because you authenticated with your iTunes or your Apple or your iCloud account. So therefore, it's the only mobile one cook apply I've seen. I don't know if anyone else is an example. Uh, I imagine LinkedIn would probably be similar. Uh, yes, I would imagine LinkedIn similar, and um, yeah, companies like that. But certainly, any company that actually owns the back end of the data, to my knowledge, are the only ones with one-click mobile fly capabilities. Yeah, you know, and, and honestly, I'm I don't think that we'll see that change very soon. I mean, just just because there is a, a heavy amount of uh, mobile activity um, doesn't mean that you should com completely convert to a mobile apply. Um, the the most important thing here is accessibility, right? And so if, if you're going to put a wall anywhere, um, it's going to be any way that's going to make it more difficult for candidates to engage with you. It's going to limit your abilities to actually get them into your CRM or your ATS. So I would advise against moving either way, full desktop or full um, mobile, but it's at least something to, to look at to kind of understand how people are embracing mobile. Great. And with that, we're running up against time. So again, you'll get a complete copy of this deck and recording within 48 hours. But I'd like to thank Work4 for, uh, for making this webinar possible. And I'd like to thank all of our panelists uh, for sharing some great insights uh, and observations about mobile recruiting. And look forward to seeing you on our next Recruiting Blogs webinar in a couple weeks. With this, we end our recording. Thank you.